Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, again, uh, I'm Peter, uh, the owner of PDP Trucking. Today we have uh, some guests. Uh, this is Dave uh, Dickerson and then David. Um, and uh, they're from Dave Dickerson and Associates. Uh, they're experts uh, from uh, the uh, tax uh, uh, office that's nearby here. Um, we'll get a chance to talk a little bit more in a minute, but um, I wanted to uh, give everybody an update uh, about a couple things that PDP uh, has going on. Uh, so first of all, um, Yes, uh, happy uh, Martin Luther King Day uh, for everyone. Uh, I hope you had a great MLK Day today. Um, yes, uh, take some good time with the family, but also, um, uh, yes, what it represents. Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, with everything that's going on uh, uh, in today's world, uh, PDP is here to stay. And that's a very, very important thing because uh, because of the self-dispatched owner-operator model, model that we have, I feel like it's the best thing uh, that um, um, you know for self-dispatched owner-operators uh, because we promote everything, everything to do with uh, self-dispatch and everything to um, empower you, the owner-operator. Uh, there are a couple things that uh, we will have uh, soon uh, and uh, a couple things that we are already jump starting like for example M truck sales uh, is a way how to get new equipment and renew older trucks and trailers uh, that's something if you look at the screen <clears throat> uh, that's something that uh, uh, Richard uh, and I have started and Richard uh, is doing a phenomenal job with that uh, there's more updates with that as we uh, get more info on it. But uh, yes, the idea is uh, we're in process of buying some more trucks uh, so that we could uh, uh, low mileage trucks. Uh, yes, and um, uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to Richard uh, for this. Um, uh, there is a shop that uh, uh, that's coming up hopefully this year the goal is but uh, we are planning to have our own shop uh, with all the things uh, you know tires and repairs um, and uh, everything to help you the owner operator you know uh, get better deals obviously uh, but also to be able to uh, you know uh, make more money and save more money on the repairs uh, on a preventive maintenance. There's going to be some uh, things, uh, uh, amenities and everything that's uh, uh, that comes with it uh, in in this building uh, that's coming up this year hopefully. Um, yes and um, so um, I wanted to share with you guys a couple updates that uh, are coming out um, or that has come out uh, recently on PDP website. And I know that uh, a lot of you guys have questions. I send out a mass email to everybody today um, uh, explaining a couple of things. If you have something specific to you, I encourage you to reply to that email directly to me. Uh, and uh, if uh, I will try to recreate the issue on my end to try to solve it. Uh, but there's a couple updates that came out uh, that's very important and I wanted to note uh, to all of you guys. First of all, uh, dashboard. So, uh, as you can see the dashboard, uh, if some of you guys uh, haven't been here for a while, I would recommend to be able to come here. I strongly recommend that you have either a computer or at least a tablet. Uh, phone is, we're trying to make this useful on the phone also, uh, but it's just too small. And um, I strongly recommend at, at least getting a tablet, they're not that expensive right now. Uh, but for you to be able to see all of this and, and uh, have a better experience uh, with the website. Uh, but the idea is you have the account, uh, you have uh, all of your contracts, you have um, uh, all of these reports. And I wanted to sh uh, share with you guys a little bit what they are, what do they mean, and why we have them basically. So over here uh, to, uh, to the left, or, uh, you see this big map. Uh, what is it? So, um, truck stop and uh, uh, get uh, a 360, uh, dead 360, and a lot of these uh, load boards, they have their own 
uh, type of uh, trending capacity um, uh, reports. Uh, we basically are uh, getting this through freight waves. Uh, we pay a subscription uh, to be able to get this because our goal and our uh, idea is to be able to give you the uh, the self-dispatch owner operator, all the tools that you need to be able to make better choices on how to book the next big load. So like for example, um, uh, I was a dispatcher, uh, uh, you know, right after, well first I was a driver, then an owner operator, then a dispatcher, then fleet owner, and when I was doing dispatching, it was very important to uh, have all the tools uh, possible to understand where you want to go and where you want to stay out of areas. So this, uh, this uh, map is unique and different because it's relevant to specifically what we do. And what we do is over the road trucking, it's uh, vans, reefers mostly. Uh, th there's no map for the flatbeds and open deck trailers yet, but uh, that's coming up later on, hopefully with freight waves. Uh, but the idea is this is information that that's relevant to us in uh, over the road and regional um, regional and over the road that's a very big deal because all of those other uh, load boards that give you these maps uh, these heat ma uh, heat maps they include local stuff too so like if uh, Dallas had all of a sudden thousand loads posted which one load was like 30 miles away uh, it will skew the data a lot it would show that hey you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff uh, in, uh, you know, in Dallas going on. But a thousand loads, uh, 30 miles each. I mean, you give that to, uh, you know, five to ten trucks, and they can handle that. So uh, it, it's it's kind of useless to include the local stuff in those, but yet they do it because you know they have a different purpose for that. Um, but with us, uh, we exclude all of that data. And we focus on specifically what's you. The idea is uh, looking at this map, uh, and it's the first beta, okay? We're trying to improve on it and stuff like that. But the idea is if you look at it, anything that's green, the more darker it is, that's where you want to go. Because there is a chance that you will have a better paying load coming out of there. Uh, anywhere where it's red, you want to try to stay out of there. Or if you do go in there, uh, you can see, like, for example, there's a Las Vegas uh, currently for a van. Uh, it's red. Well, if you're there, I mean, stop wasting your time uh, trying to, you know, rip out your leftover hair uh, and just go down to California because they have some green areas over there and you most likely will have better, uh, you know, chance of booking loads from there. Or the same thing like in here. When I was booking, this is something you had to know as a dispatcher. Okay, whenever you go to Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, it's a great area to get out of. But most of the time, you don't have loads always going into Ohio paying good. You have not so good uh, paying loads because they know they can get some good, uh, you know, good loads coming out. So what I would do, I would go into these red areas like, for example, Pittsburgh, uh, PA, and then I would deadhead to the green area uh, into Ohio, which is just 100 miles away, and book a good load there uh, to come out. So this is kind of the idea on how to use this. Uh, this uh, PDP supply chain index, it's a um, overall U.S., um, um, I guess, uh, market history, what's going on. Yeah, if you look at this, this is a uh, last month. So like whenever we had the, yeah, last month, whenever we had uh, December over holidays, uh, it surged uh, quite a bit uh, because everybody uh, needed, you know, more trucks. And now it dropped a little bit right after. If, if you see this, this is, uh, uh, yeah, December 25th, 26th. So, Right around Christmas, it dropped significantly and it went under this black line. This black line, uh, it represents uh, the, um, I guess, the baseline. Anything that's under is loose uh, market. Anything that's over is a tight market. And the more tighter, the better. We've seen a little bit spike here. Um, and this was around beginning of um, uh, January. 
and this is for a reefer. Van went up a little bit, but not as much. And now we're kind of moving along that, uh, you know, that black line right now. So, and you have to understand that um, the way this works is the longer uh, uh, you have, uh, uh, you know, on the on the tight market, the the longer time it uh, it has for the market to get you know better in that area if you have just a search for a little bit it will go up and then drops uh, you know uh, to a baseline again but if you have it going up steadily all the time that means it will start to increase more and more and more and more and you'll have a better chance of getting good loads out of there if it's under uh, it's the reverse I mean the, the longer it is under the baseline the, the you know that's bad so with the market and how that works, uh, I encourage you to check into this. This is a very, very big deal um, uh, because, you know, you need to know where to go, uh, what's the good market, what's the bad market. Right now, because of 2022 and how we are with a uh, cycle, it's most likely going to be a good year uh, or at least until November-ish, uh, you know, something like that from my prediction. Uh, but we'll see how it all happens. Every year it's always different. But uh, what I do know that, uh, you know, 2023, this will become very, re very relevant to you. So try to, under, uh, you know, uh, look at this and uh, get, make sure you understand all of this. Um, uh, most valuable operator award. There was a, um, uh, a little thing that I had to fix. I sent an email to everybody. I did fix that today. Uh, there's uh, basically we had uh, um, here. Let me see. Let me. Yeah. So looking at this, uh, we had uh, the um, uh, the BTO card points uh, were not including all uh, one year, or it was in, it was including more than one year. So I had to limit it to one year because uh, we only look at the points based our uh you know on a contract and based on the uh guidelines bto guidelines it's actually only one year from today and then keep trucking wasn't showing all of the uh, things so i had to fix that uh gross loads uh this is something important that you guys need to understand the way we do all of this gross loads is the last 30 days um keep trucking is today plus seven days prior and then BTO card points in, is in the last one year. But uh, you got to understand that it's a revolving, ongoing, uh, into the future type of thing. The goal is for us to take a look at the most valuable operator award uh, once a month during these meetings and get the names during these meetings. So um, the better you have, uh, uh, you know, all of these uh, information, um, I feel like uh, the better choice you can make uh, as an owner operator, uh, but uh, this that's what it's for basically all of these a little bit to finish about dashboard BTO card points. I mean uh, if you guys still don't know what this is, this is very very important because um, yeah let me see uh, this is what we base off uh, uh, off of the um, basically. Uh, all the violations, all the roadside inspections, crashes. Uh, if you have uh, this, basically the way you read this is anything that's uh, dark in here, it's the fleet. Anything that's light, it's you specifically. So like you can actually click on these to deselect them and uh, only leave out uh, what's uh, specific to yours. So like in here, for example, this person has nothing uh, specific to them when it comes to, see, like you have dark red and light red, uh, you know, dark green, light green, dark blue, light blue. So if you leave out only the light ones, it will be relevant to you specifically. Uh, this is the whole fleet. And it's also ongoing. Okay, it updates automatically by itself. So uh, you can see in here that basically the most, Mostly all the uh, inspections are being passed. Our top violations are have to do with brakes currently. Tires is the second uh, thing. 
you know, and then there's uh, accidents, incidents, uh, you know, all of those other little ones. Uh, but this is why there's a big emphasis by BTO integration and the whole office on uh, brakes uh, and so forth. Um, okay. Uh, there's the uh, customer concentration. All of these uh, reports, I strongly recommend that you look at them. Uh, I just want to show one more thing. So this is a daily trends. Uh, this shows uh, all of the transactions, uh, all of the stuff like you have the, the pending loads right here, or pending anything basically that's coming out. Uh, fuel transactions, uh, maintenance, uh, um, you know loan contracts if you had any and then you have to click into each one insurance and you know so on so long story short this is the new daily trends um this is how it looks uh if you have and then like if you want to click on here uh, this thing uh you can see more of the stuff same thing okay this guy don't have the truck contract so that's why it's like that but long story short um this is where it's much more interactive it's much faster uh, the PNL report, I, uh, I'm working on this, and this is what happened. I mean, uh, I really wanted to have it done by the end of the year, but the, um, uh, the daily trends and a couple things that, you know, was giving me issues, I had to focus on those before I could have done that because uh, of, the, of the all new updates that have been coming out in the last year. So long story short, um, I know that taxes uh, is due. Uh, this year and we're gonna get into this a little bit more but this is uh, something that uh, I'm gonna have the profit and loss report uh, by category I will have that done uh, I'm focusing trying to get it done this week um, but let's switch over uh, to Dave uh, uh, and David uh, about uh, taxes right um, All right. Yeah, so let me uh, speak a little bit into this, uh, just so uh, you guys know if, uh, if you haven't uh, uh, met them before. Uh, Dave and David, they're actually right here uh, next door to our office. And they've been here just as longer than me, actually. We've been here since 2013. So. Um, and uh, uh, they're both uh, been in this industry for a long time. I know David, uh, and I mean, Dave, you've been in banking and uh, did taxes uh, since 80s. Uh, there is a cool website that they have. Um, yeah, this is their website, truckerstax.com. Let me go ahead and share this with everybody right now. Yes, but they have uh, all of the information here as far as how to contact them. Uh, they're right here uh, next to us. Uh, they have frequently asked questions um, and then a form to contact them. But enough me talking. Uh, you guys uh, talk. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, what you do and so forth. All right. Thank you, Peter. I'm Dave Dickerson. Uh, I own Dave Dickerson and Associates, LLC. Uh, I got into the tax business he really started about 1985 when I caught the CPA that I had hired to do my taxes trying to double charge me for work already done. And about that time my job in the banking industry evaporated. So I started reading the books myself. I had a lot of time and no money. So one thing led to another and I ended up uh, taking a, a basic tax prep class from uh, H&R Block in late 88 and in 1989 went to work for them as a, a, a seasonal tax preparer, did that two years and then they bumped me up to full-time assistant district manager. That uh, evaporated a couple of years later when they did a uh, total reorganization of all of their North Texas territories and so I, I was out of a job. I caught some contract work back in the banking industry for a few months and then hooked on with Jackson Hewitt Tax Service again as a preparer supposed to be temporary part-time help ended up being the main horse 
and at the beginning of the next season that particular franchise owner made me assistant manager and over three or four years uh, it worked into full time year round. So when did you open up uh, Dave Dickerson's and Associates? Well I actually started Dave Dickerson and Associates in 1985 but uh, full-time in the tax business was January 2003 and we've just gone onward and upward uh, with me today is David Evans an associate uh, David and I both have the credential called EA enrolled agent it is the federal tax specialist credential uh, we are authorized to represent taxpayers to the IRS the same as a CPA or attorney. CPAs are accounting specialists. Some are pretty good on trucking. EAs are tax specialists. So You do all the legwork. <laughs> the CPA just signs off on it. <laughs> we do a lot of legwork, uh, yes, um, and we have uh, a couple of ladies who work with us as well and I don't do very much actual tax preparation anymore I still do some but not as much they do most of the preparation and then I look at them mm -hmm. to make sure everything's right and if I have a question okay how did you get this why did you do this so forth so Anyway, we try to have a minimum of two sets of eyes look at every return that goes out. So it's very a uh, big deal that you guys are here because uh, as I mentioned to you guys before, we want to bring in experts uh, uh, specific and relevant to the owner operator. So, uh, and this is very big deal. You're not just tax prep, just, not just another bookkeeper. No, uh, you, uh, there's some niche, right? what is that okay we specialize in small business and self-employed uh, IRS has a designation SB slash SE those are more complex types of returns uh, but it's all trucking right well it can be anything but all of you business truck operators are self-employed and your return is a little more complex than the usual. We're not dependent on walk-in traffic. We get 99 plus percent of our new business by word of mouth referral. We have clients nationwide. Uh -huh. uh, we keep books for about 35 different operations. Now with you folks, uh, under contract with PDP, part of the benefits you get affiliating with PDP is you're keeping the books for them, doing their IFTA reports, uh -huh. uh, so forth. So they're they're paying you admin fees for those and and several other goodies. Um, we can do bookkeeping and IFTA reports. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff that uh, we don't do yet at least and uh, like you know we only do what's relevant that goes through PDP right all the profit and loss report only comes what PDP so like if they had uh, any uh, other expenses that's you know outside of PDP they'll still have to right put it on tax their and you can other, help them with that. their other business of uh, items other than having to do with your trucking business that need to go into your tax return that's when you come to us bring your PDP P&L report and so forth to us we can do your tax returns for you and we electronically file everything that we can uh -huh. so and a lot of things um, okay the structure of your business is very important. 
this is a very big deal because we actually require all of our owner operators to have a structure. Uh, so go ahead. Okay. Before Peter asked you to, to set up an entity, you were probably running as a sole proprietor. The next higher entity is going to be a single member LLC where you own the whole thing and you continue to file a Schedule C on your 1040 the same as if you were just a sole proprietor. If you have a multi-member LLC, Limited Liability Company, that requires a partnership return. We can do those. Or if you want to get a little deeper into it and keep better records, you can set up a corporation. An S Corp is a corporation that chooses to be taxed as an individual, basically, or a partnership. Yeah, PDP is an S Corp. Yes, PDP is an S Corp. Dave Dickerson and Associates at this time is a single member LLC. That's me. Uh -huh. um, but if you want to, uh, there, are, there can also be a, a, a C Corporation. If you're in a corporation, a C Corporation, you're going to be drawing, or even an S Corp, you're going to draw a W-2 from your corporation. Your entity, your LLC or corporation is going to draw a 1099 from PDP. So don't confuse the two. Mm -hmm. But if you are setting up um, one of these entities, um, you will have um, probably franchise tax from the state that you are chartered in. We can help you get those entities set up if you need to. If you are in a corporation and drawing a W-2 from your corporation, you also incur payroll tax uh, liabilities. We can prepare those payroll tax reports for you, those 941 quarterly, 940 annual, which is the federal unemployment, state unemployment. In Texas with uh, LLCs or corporations, you have to file an, an annual franchise tax report. You won't owe franchise tax unless your revenue exceeds like 1.1 million. That's a rough figure right now. Uh, but you have to file the report. And they get very upset if you don't file that report. One of the things that they, it goes with this is what's called a public information report. That becomes a matter of public record. Who owns this company? How can it be contacted? Who is the registered agent? Uh, we can help you set those up uh, for less expense than going to somebody, say, legal Zoom or an attorney somewhere. Yep. So, uh, if uh, now we also have uh, bookkeeping available, but in your case, PDP is doing your bookkeeping for you, but you ha may have other deductible expenses. You may have other expenses that you paid cash direct that didn't go on your fuel card or whatever that were not reported to PDP, or you have a home mortgage, you have dependents, you may have charitable contributions. Um, your Children may have uh, school loans, whatever. We have asked uh, Peter and Myra to uh, uh, 
put out a list of uh, various items that are deductible for truckers and we think this is a pretty comprehensive list it's not necessarily in alpha order it started out that way <laughs> but through the years there's been a few things have dropped out um, but these things would be deductible on your uh, Schedule C or uh, partnership or corporation report. But this as is, far as it, now, if you were a W-2 employee, that Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 took some of the deductibility of things away from us. But we try to get uh, your per diem allowances in there. Um, yeah, and looking at this list, it's very fascinating that, uh, I mean, you have uh, even simple things like pens and, you know, uh, usually it's not just oil or repairs and stuff like that. You can oh, get it to very, very... Those very, things very, add up. Little things. Yeah, if, you, if you're buying your truck, the uh, interest you're paying on that loan is deductible. Or, or trailer, or if you're leasing, those lease payments are 100% deductible as lease rent. Yep. So, if you have any storage that you keep your tools uh, and belongings in while you're on the road, that's also deductible as rent. So we have a second place, and also we do three or four different uh, returns for people in PDP now, so we're familiar with what. Peter and PDP do for you as far as their bookkeeping goes, we can take that information and do your taxes relatively easy, easily and completely and have a good, what we feel, solid return for you to present and get the most money we can back for you or keep you from paying as much as we can. Yep. I might mention one other thing here, Peter. All of you folks are self-employed. As such, you don't have anything from which to have income tax is withheld or pay in your Social Security or Medicare. Unless so, you pay yourself payroll, basically. Unless you're doing your own payroll through a, to a, you have a corporation yeah. and are drawing a W-2. Um, on the, um, anyway, the self-employment tax, which is both shares of Social Security and Medicare, because you're both the em employee and the employer, um, gets added to your income tax, and you get a huge tax bill each year you're supposed to be making quarterly estimated tax payments. We can help you figure that out. But one thing that we have discovered through the years is that most truckers have a great deal of difficulty saving up the money to make that quarterly estimated payment. It's better if you can chop it up into smaller bites. IRS will take your money anytime they can get it. <laughs> You're not, not you, help, you can help. <laughs> Legal. So, so what Legal. we have come up with is the idea of printing extra sets of estimated tax payment vouchers for you and you can send it in monthly. If you want to send in an estimated payment weekly, they'll take it. There's no limit on the number of estimated tax payments you can make. Mm -hmm. But IRS says this is a pay-as-you-go tax system and they want you to be paying in estimated tax payments uh, throughout the year. So if you have questions, we can sure, we'll try to answer them. If it's something real specific to you, uh, you have our contact information, I believe, uh, on the bottom of this uh, deductible items list or from our website. 
So I'll share the the list uh, after this meeting so that everybody has it. All right, uh, very good. Yes, but here you go. Uh, here's all the uh, information. Uh, before we get into the uh, MVO award and the drawing, which we will have those still, uh, I want to get into Q and A's um, because it's uh, getting time there a little bit. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and open up for everybody to. Well, actually, everybody should be able to unmute themselves. Uh, uh, whoever wants to speak. Uh, uh, so, yeah, this is a time for Q&As. Go ahead. Andre, I, I, I see that you're unmuted. Yes, sir. I have a question. Yes, sir. So, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm, and, you know, uh, we all knew into business, so I'm trying to determine whether or not it's best uh, to stay in LLC or move into an S core as a sole proprietor, which is going to give me the best tax advantage. It really shouldn't make that much difference which one you uh, go to. Um, some attorneys will argue that you really need to be incorporated to have the best liability protection. Uh, and have from like your, a lawsuit or something? Right. If somebody wants to sue you from uh, an accident or whatever, um, each level is up is going to require more and more record keeping. And it'll make more. The LLC has not been determined to be totally worthless either. Um, so... Uh, if you've been operating as a sole proprietor and you need to become an, an LLC, a single member LLC, kind of get used to it and get lined out a little bit and then at some point in the future, preferably at a calendar year end, uh, if you want to go ahead and incorporate, we need to get things set up so that you're ready to go right off um, January 1 and that's the the easiest transition time yeah January because 1. like with PDP uh, we we you have to ha be at least sole proprietor which is basically a DBA okay mm -hmm. your your name's on the line you can call it something else but your name's on the line everything's on the line which is the least uh, right like the the worst case, I guess, or the, the most simplest ways. Right. Now, then, now even, even the sole proprietor, being a trucking business, has that EIN, employer ID number from IRS. You have to have that to take care of the heavy yes. highway use tax. Mm -hmm. So that's the number that we would use uh, going into a single member LLC. It's the same number. Same bank account. You shouldn't have to do any. Shouldn't even have to switch accounts. Uh, you call it a. Put the name on the, the check when you get new checks printed. Yeah, that's for the sole proprietor. And then LLC is a little bit step up, and then after that. Right, it's LLC is it's it stands for limited liability company. Uh, like I say, single member or then a multi-member, which would file a partnership return. I really do not recommend you get into partnerships um, because in a partnership, you um, uh, when you become a partner, your partner has access to all of your assets and you have access to theirs. And unless you have a real good situation, um, that can turn sour. Uh -huh. Now, we, we do have uh, uh, husband-wife teams that uh, are equal owners of an LLC. And we file a partnership return for their LLC. 
Yeah, so if there's a good relationship there, then so, it's good. Yeah, you want to want to make sure that there's somebody you want to stay married to for quite a while. <laughs> well, we, we also have a married couple that's an escort. Oh yeah. So and they they set it up that way deliberately, so they have a little more protection. Also, they're paying themselves wages and taking the uh, payroll taxes out, the Social Security and the Medicare every month, and that way they don't have to worry about having the uh, self-employment taxes later. So I guess uh, just to kind of help, uh, you know, uh, Andrew, um, it, it, it sounds like it's a preference thing. It is. To an extent it is, to a large extent. But if you happen to get into a, uh, uh, if you have an accident that there may be some criminal liability come from, it may may go better if you happen to be in a corporation. I don't know. I haven't really had yeah, any experience to feed yeah, to get feedback on that. So, yeah. okay. Well, I hope that answers. Uh, uh, okay, I got <laughs> Philip. Yeah, yeah. Hey guys. Hey, uh, Dave. I, I talked to you a couple of years ago. Hey Peter, how y'all how y'all doing? Um, so I've had an LLC since 2017, and uh, you know I, I feel like I'm at the at the point like I wanted to file for an S corp, elect S corp last year, but I just you know um, I got quoted you know upwards of $1,200 from like a CPA to do it, and on further research um, I found that two five five three. Um, is kind of all you really need to do to elect to do to do an S corp. I mean, I'm just wondering how much DIY can we do um, to get to the S corp status? Now, what from what I understand, you know, the reason I really want to do it, just to um, comment on Andrew's question, is I feel I, you know I've paid my truck off and I'm losing some of my um, expenses. I, I, I do my own bookkeeping. I kind of noted in the chat, um, and I just send that off to my tax preparer. Um, and I'm very effective with, uh, you know, you know, writing everything I can possibly get off. But now I don't have like a, a truck payment and I'm, I'm losing, you know, you know, substantial amount of um, write off there. So as an escort, um, I could elect to pay myself as an employee for like forty thousand dollars. And then you W2 yourself on that. Um, and, you know, that you, you would be paying you know taxes as like a, as an employee there um, now. I don't know if you would also be paying taxes on um, the additional income uh, from the uh, S corp after you've paid your employee and any any sort of uh, income you've showed from that. And I also think that kind of ties into what your um, investment strategies are and if there's any sort of like you know protections there based on what you're doing with your money and in, 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 uh, investments. Um, do you care to comment on that, uh, Dave? Okay. When you set up the S Corp um, and you're just assuming all the assets and liabilities of your sole prop or LLC, uh, your truck would, if you own the truck, uh, you would set it into the S Corp at fair market value at the time of the transition. So then it would. Uh, I believe it can start depreciation all over again. So, uh, you know, if whatever your tax base is, it, well, it's fair market value at that. Right. So, uh, in terms in terms of electing as an S corp, though, is it is it pretty basic to do, or is it something that is a little more sophisticated that I'm not understanding? Because I understand there's a, a document, the 2553, that you submit to uh, the IRS, and then you've now elected as an escort, and you still maintain the entity, the LLC entity. You're just electing to file as an escort from moving here on out. <clears throat> and I think that that deadline has to be done by March of this year, but they'll accept it late, um, I guess, up until as late as October, I've heard. I don't know. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, I think 75 days would be March 15th. Uh, I wouldn't want to count on anything after March 15th. There's so many changes coming out of Washington right now, it is unbelievable. <laughs> One advantage to having an S Corp, you were talking about 
having the W-2, your corporation is actually in charge of or required to pay your payroll taxes. So the S-Corp pays half of it, you pay half of it, and that way you have another deduction coming out of your S-Corp before the money comes to you personally. So you save. You save. Right. And then, yeah, and then whatever, the, awesome. and whatever the bottom line net profit is to the S-Corp, after it pays your salary, then comes to you. The S-Corp issues a Form K-1, which you have to report on your personal 1040 for the additional um, profit. We hope it's profit. <laughs> uh, it's going to be profit this year so, and last year for so sure. So all of the all of the income eventually through one route or another, you're going to pay tax on all of that income. It just depends on right. what the rate is based on. Well, this is true out. too, right. um, because it right now corporate tax rate is twenty one percent until. Mm, Washington gets through messing things up, <laughs> but anyway, and there uh, are there, are, sir. For for any of the guys out there uh, interested in doing like an S core and and paying yourself a, a W two uh, employee salary, there are um, companies out there that you can just do it. Like uh, Gusto is is one that I've looked into where they they you just yeah you know, pay like forty bucks a month or whatever, and then they manage all the withholdings. And uh, all the reportings, and prepare your W two for you at the end of the year, we, or, or go with maybe Dave or something. But there are there are there are uh, companies out there where you can just kind of do it yourself, you know. Yes, there uh, are companies out there that can do it. We can do that for you. Uh, you don't charge twelve hundred bucks. No, <laughs> to set to set it up, we're our fees are going to be a whole lot less than what even LegalZoom is going to charge. To set that up, and then they're going to charge you uh, a an annual fee to be your registered agent. You can be your own registered agent. You ought to be your own registered agent. Um, that way, any communications that come from the state are going to come to you. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, we're we're much more reasonable than those. Uh, we can prepare your uh, payroll tax reports, both state and federal. And uh, yep, yeah, this thing that you guys are talking about, actually, with with their help, we, um, my dad, uh, my father-in-law, uh, he drives uh, with us, and I think he's part of this team, part of this uh, conversation today. Uh, they actually have this thing set up with uh, Dave's help. Same thing, uh, you know, to be able to pay themselves and all of that. So, and it, it's not that hard. Uh, you, uh, you ask, uh, you know, D, uh, uh, do it yourself. Is it really hard? No, it's actually not that hard. But it's a good idea to have uh, some experienced uh, recommendation just to make sure you're doing it everything properly. So, uh, because it is a preference thing, and it's a personal, uh, you know, setup. Like what, what, are you, what's going on for you? What might work for you might not work for others. But uh, for majority of you guys uh, that are driving, you know, as a self-dispatch owner operator, all of you are self-dispatched, or uh, all of you are independent contractors, self-employed. So it's a matter of, uh, you know, figuring out. Uh, how much to pay or uh, or what to pay and how because either way like like everybody said you know taxes you're gonna have to pay taxes but right. you can save right legally legally on, save right <laughs> folks on fees we're not we're not cheap we're not exorbitant uh we are professionals uh we factor into our fees uh our time and our expertise, uh, but one of the the goals of my business, we try to treat everybody the way we ourselves would like to be treated. So we're not going to gouge you. 
and just some some outfits are out there they're all they're interested in is getting your money well we like money too but no we we want you to be friends and if we part company we want it to be friendly <laughs> <laughs> no and i can attest to that i mean i've known you guys for as long as we've been in this building since 2013 january 1st 2013 when we just came in 13 and i thought it was 2012. no it was 13. I was 13, yeah. okay. <laughs> All right, uh, we got one more question. Uh, Kevin, you have a question? And then we'll do the next thing. Kevin, do you unmute yourself to ask a question? Yeah, um, no, yeah. Right now, as independent contractors, we're not paying in to like Social Security or, or Medicaid. If we're having our, Say are you okay. there? Yeah, you're kind of breaking up, but uh, to understand the question was, uh, as an independent contractor, do you pay Social Security and Medicaid, right? Medicare. Medicare. Right, right. Okay, the answer to that is yes, you definitely do. It's what's called SE tax, self-employment tax. Since as an independent okay. contractor, you are both employee and employer. You have to pay both shares of Social Security and Medicare. If you're an employee, your employer withholds 6.2% of your earnings for Social Security and 1.45% of your earnings for Medicare. If you're self-employed, you're both, you get to pay both shares. So that's 15.3%. And then your income tax is on top of that. So that's why your income tax bill is going to look horrendous to you the first year or two. But uh, that's because probably there's more of that is going to be going toward Social Security and Medicare than toward income tax. Yeah, because you got to build up that fund. But uh, if you do the payroll way, from my understanding, uh, you get to deduct, uh, you know, those if expenses. If you go corporation uh, and make yourself, and you technically become an employee of your corporation, and the corp your corporation issues you a W-2 form, your corporation has to match the Social Security and Medicare. In that case, your corporation withholds 7.65% for those two items yeah. from what you're taking and your corporation has to match that and then all of it go into uh, the government and via these uh, quarterly, uh, quarterly payroll tax reports and estimated tax payments. Yep. Well, I hope that so that's answer. all working. That's all working to the estimated payments. Yep. Yep. Okay. All righty. Um, all right. So we're gonna uh, switch over. I think I've seen Andre or somebody. Uh, Andrew, Andrew, or Andre. There's a couple of you um, that are unmuted. But uh, anybody else? Just last call. Yeah, I just got. I got one more last quick question. Go ahead. And, uh, and I guess I, I didn't run a W-2 this year, so I'm all 1099. So am I going to lose out on disbursements that I took from my company as far as being able to write that off? Is there any way to recover that, or, or how does that work? Okay, you're running as what, a single-member LLC? Yes, sir. Okay, and... Uh, yeah, you just you just have to pay, end up paying tax. If you're single member LLC, you file a Schedule C on your Form 1040, uh, the same as if you are a sole proprietor. And whatever the bottom line net is, you pay social or SE tax, uh, self employment tax on that. And then whatever other income expense items you have that go into your Form 1040, uh, then you figure out what the, the income tax itself is and, and uh, the total that you have to pay includes 
uh, your self-employment tax. So you're not going to lose out on that, but uh, no, what you if you're you're just taking draws, no, you're going to pay tax on that. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Well, <clears throat> okay. So the ultimate is the best is to just set up a W two and pay yourself payroll. For a lot of people, it is. For yeah. other people, it doesn't work that well. They would rather pay monthly and pay their SE tax, their estimated payments, every month, and then come out at the end of the year, and they're through paying them. I wonder, what is that so, differentiator? Uh, ater? <laughs> you say for some people this, for some, why? What? It depends on how much you're making, what your gross is, what your expenses are. We were talking to someone who has purchased their truck, their trailer, all that's paid off. Probably an S Corp would be better. If you still have lots of deductions that you can take, the LLC might be better. And it's each individual person. There's no formula that sets that up. Another factor that is going to enter in is your own self-discipline. Yeah. <laughs> I can say Make, that again. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can be drawing a W-2 and having tax withheld and so forth. You can still make estimated tax payments. If you have other income from which there is no tax withheld, even if you're taking a W-2 from your own corporation, you may need to be making estimated tax payments to cover the tax on that other income that nothing's being withheld from, like if you're lucky enough to have a bunch of investments. Well, or for me, when I first started teaching, I was a school teacher. I taught school, had a W-2, but I also farmed in the summer. Drove semi, combine, tractor, whatever. Uh, and they did not take any taxes out of my farm income. So when I got to the end of the year, I thought I had everything set up. And I ended up owing six or seven hundred dollars in 1978, which I was not expecting. And as a teacher making less than ten thousand dollars a year, Six hundred dollars was a lot of money that I couldn't come up with. Yep. So it, I had to start taking out the SE so the, tax. So self control thing is very important because you can have all of this stuff set up, but not use it, and then it's useless. But if you uh, do set it up uh, and you do actually do it, then it's worth it. Then it's uh, useful and you're actually getting something. Right. But if you uh, haven't done anything and then kind of trying to backtrack or backpedal, you know, from last year to kind of make it look like it's going to be really, really, I don't know, possible. It, possible. It's better to be proactive on the front end. So... But that's the thing, like, uh, you, you know, you learn and how to do better in the future. I mean, you can try to solve the past or try to worry about the past that you can't change. Uh, yeah, I mean, you learn from that and then make sure uh, from now on. So this is a new year, so everybody's a good, uh, you know, lesson yeah. to... Uh, well, that's to how do. we got to where we are. A lot of trial and error. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And a lot of continuing education as well. Yep. Alrighty, so uh, it's getting uh, kind of late. Um, yes, uh, I hope all of those questions are answered. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, please uh, reach out to them. Uh, again, uh, uh, I have a, a contact information right here. Uh, I messaged the uh, information to everybody while we were talking. And I will also include all of this in the email that I will uh, blast email everybody after the meeting. Uh, but uh, anybody have any other questions or anything uh, you guys want to talk about what's best for you? Because it sounds like it's a preference thing and it's an individual thing. Like Very what much. is it with you specifically going on? Uh, so definitely uh, worth uh, calling them or talking to them or, you know, this is beginning of the year. So it's best time of the year to start now. Right. You know, right. with all the stuff. So, um, yes, with that said, uh, we're going to go into the drawing. time. So, John could have won $300, but okay. And the second winner is... Bill Locker. Bill, congratulations. I've seen your name here. Are you here? 
Happy I'm here. Yep. Yeah, yep, yeah, you're here. Okay, good. Thank yep, you, I'm Bill. Here. All right, and then, uh, so yeah, the first one, John wasn't here, so we're going to do another one. Two winners right here. We need two winners. The second winner is... Oh, very close. Joe Andrew. Joe, are you guys here? Hey, what's up? Yep, congratulations. Yeah, what's, up, Peter? what's up, congratulations. Thanks, buddy. Alrighty, cool, so man. that's uh Thank the... you. <laughs> I, I Thank never you. win. <laughs> well, hold on. I've been here two years, man. I've never won. <laughs> we haven't done this that long, but um, let's see. We have uh, most valuable awards, which, which this is the bigger, uh, uh, you know, surprise. Um, <clears throat> here, hold on. Let me mute some of these because uh, mute all. Okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> these are the three winners. And I want to talk about this a little bit. Uh, so you guys are aware, um, it's, I mean, most valuable, you know, report, most valuable, right? What is the most valuable? We've asked, we've had this, uh, we've had this question asked a couple times, but um, what is most valuable? A lot of guys think that if you make the most money, that means uh, you're the most valuable. It's true, I mean, making good money is a big deal. However, doing it safe for a long time, I, in my opinion at least, it's much more important. Because uh, from my experience, you or anybody else that, that is making money, if you ask anybody who's gotten rich from being an owner-operator or, or rich from driving, every single one of you tell you that uh, it's persistence, uh, it, it's not that they delivered one, uh, one load that was million dollars and all of a sudden they're millionaires. No, <laughs> you know, uh, but it, it's a, cons a, a consistent uh, persistence on, uh, uh, you know, steady, slowly, but steady. And uh, this is why safety in our uh, calculation is uh, two thirds of uh, uh, you know the whole calculation revenue stats is only one third uh, so we take uh, uh, keep trucking um, we take BTO card and we take revenue uh, all of those uh, divided into one third so the first uh, winner is Carlos Dawkins congratulations and if you look at this report uh, because I'm just showing it out there for everyone I mean uh, you can see this on your dashboard uh, if you go to your dashboard, um, like, um, let's see, um, I mean, I'm just going to pick on Adam again, but, uh, yes, right here, uh, it's going to show up in a little bit. <clears throat> it takes a little bit, yeah, because there's a lot of calculation right there. See, it tells you the stats, uh, it tells you the points, and, uh, if you're missing any so the way the way this works uh, you have the safety stats you have the revenue stats and then if you're missing any DQ files uh, you will be excluded like this guy for example um, you know if you have uh, something missing on DQ uh, you know it, it will exclude you from uh, being uh, awarded uh, on this reward uh, also, uh, some of you guys asked, well, what about me who have uh, ELD exempt? Uh, it's possible to be on here. See, like in here, you're ELD exempt and it is possible to be on there. Uh, but the most, the people that get the most, uh, uh, that will get this reward the most, will be the ones who are safest the most. Okay? And if you have any questions on that, please reach out to BTO uh, uh, Integration. They can walk you through how all that works. Uh, you are actually able to see your uh, Keep Trucking uh, uh, scorecard on your phone, uh, on the app uh, where you do your logs. So check that. I mean, they have, I've seen that they have ways uh, on how to improve or some guidance on how to improve. Um, and obviously BTO cards, I mean, if you do, uh, if you get positive points, which attending these meetings right here 
and also to uh, um, uh, pass roadside inspections. You know, that gives you a lot of points. Uh, I mean, level one is like 10 points, I believe, or something like that. So, um, yeah. But the first winner is Carlos Dawkins. Uh, you're getting $1,000. Congratulations. Woohoo. Uh, Jake uh, Hughes, uh, you're the second winner. Uh, you're getting $750. Uh, and then Adam Gentry, you, uh, you're the third winner, uh, which, you know, we've had Adam actually win before, uh, uh, higher prices. But uh, bottom line, it all has to do with who is continuously uh, operating and being safe. Okay? It's that simple. Um, thank you guys uh, for joining us. Thank you so much. We had a good uh, talk today. Again, uh, Dave and David, thank you guys for coming. Thank you for having us. Yes, yes, sir. They're right here on the other side of our wall. So if anybody wants to come and talk to them, please uh, come in, call them. Uh, I'm going to leave their contact information right here on the screen again. And I'll share this all uh, too. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a blessed day.